So today I'll be building a gaming setup, but I can only buy the products from Timu. Is it gonna be absolute trash? Am I gonna get scammed? Or are they actually gonna have pretty decent products? Find out on today's episode of Setup or Messed Up. That's actually terrible. So these are all the gear I purchased from Teamu.com using my own money. And even though a portion of this video is sponsored by Teamu themselves, they have no control on how this video goes and what I'm going to say about these products. As most of you already know, Teemu is an online shopping mega store that offers just about any product you can imagine with affordable prices and amazing coupons. In fact, there are over a thousand items on sale for just a dollar, which is pretty nuts. They're doing this for one month only to celebrate Timu's one year anniversary. On top of that, there is a statewide sale with savings up to 90% off. And if you guys download the Timu app using my link below, you can get $100 worth of coupons for free. So yeah, you guys can save a buttload of money right now shopping on Timu. But anyways, let's go ahead and get these unboxed, set it up and take it for a test drive. Okay, so here is a setup I built using only Timu. The only thing that's not from Timu here is obviously the desk and the PC because they don't sell that on the website. Um, and I did add my own mouse pad just because I've learned my lesson from the past not to buy a mouse pad from Timu. So I'm using the new orange black liquid from our season 10 designs. Also, I sound like a dying giraffe. I apologize, I just came back from surgery. So my voice is gonna be like this for another week or so until I fully recover. But nonetheless, let's check out the setup. So let's start with the monitor that I picked up for 150 bucks. It's called the Eposun, and it's a 24 inch 1080p display with a nasty 180 Hertz refresh rate. It's also got HDR and FreeSync support with basic compatibility, which is nice if you decide to mount the monitor on your desk or your wall. Construction-wise, the mount isn't too terrible. I mean, it is definitely flimsy and only offers tilt adjustments, but it doesn't take up much space from the desk because of the narrow legs on here. Luckily, it is basic compatible, so you can just mount this on your desk or your wall anyways. I do, however, like the thin bezels on the sides and the top with a moderate size chin on the bottom. The viewing angles are pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. There wasn't any major color shifting horizontally or vertically, I mean, it is advertised as an IPS panel, so it's to be expected, but it's also advertising to have a one millisecond response time, which I'm kind of doubting. So I do want to confirm that real quick. Let's pull up the, uh, the ghost UFO test to see if there's any crone artifacts or ghosting. Wow, very impressive. You guys fooled me. No crone artifacts or ghosting present from the UFO test. So the one millisecond response time most likely is as advertised. So I don't get it, what's the catch? 150 bucks for a 180 hertz monitor sounds like a pretty damn good deal. Maybe their color reproduction is bad, let's, let's check that out. Okay, we're gonna check out the color accuracy using the Spider X Pro Utility. This is what I always use for my monitor test that I used to do back in the day. So let's sync this up, check it out. My money is on a very color inaccurate display. That's the only other way they're able to sell this for 150 bucks. Five minutes later. What did I say? I called it. 93% of sRGB coverage and only 72% of Adobe RGB. That is some of the lowest numbers I've seen on a monitor. So that explains why they're selling this for 150 bucks. Also, I just noticed this, but it uh, looks like the ports in the back are a little too close to the bottom of the monitor. So when you plug in the cables, you can see it going down from the front. Not exactly the best design choice, and it's not really a big deal, but definitely something I should mention. Honestly, I still think it's a good price for a gaming monitor. Like, I wouldn't buy this primarily for content creation or color-sensitive work, but, you know, if you're looking for a high refresh rate monitor, for 150 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. All right, moving on to the microphone, and I'm not gonna lie, guys, at first I thought this was the Shure MV7 microphone because it looks identical. Same exact mic design, same exact mount design. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they ripped off the blueprints of the original MV7. But anyways, how does the mic quality sound? That's what's important here. Well, you guys can be the judge because I'm talking directly into the F Deuce microphone. I'm about two to three inches away from the tip of the microphone. This is ideally how you wanna talk into it. 
I'm recording using Audacity. This is all raw recording, no editing is done. And this is a dynamic microphone as well, which is great for streaming and gaming because it's not gonna be picking up any outside noises as much. I got my AC on full blast in the office, and I also got my pool pump on 100% right outside the office. So I'm gonna stay quiet and see if the microphone picks up any noises. I also got my Rama keyboard. I'm gonna do a quick typing test over here and see if it picks up any keyboard tests or keyboard clicks as I'm talking directly into the microphone. I'm not sure how the quality of the microphone is um, because I'm not listening to it as I'm talking. So I'll let you guys be the judge in the comment section below. Now the microphone does have a built-in mute button on the top as well as a volume control for your headphones because in the back of the microphone there's actually a headphone jack where you can plug in your headphones if you want to monitor the audio. But do keep in mind you're gonna have to use the included USB-C cable and plug that in the back of your PC if you want to use that feature. Unfortunately, the mic doesn't have a stand, so I had to pick up a boom arm. Um, I thought this one was a pretty good deal on Timu. I picked it up for $38. Um, one of the things I like about this one actually is because of its reach. Look how far, look how long the neck piece is. So if you guys want to bring this up over your monitor for like an overhead type of setup like I have here, you can do that, or you can clamp this on the side of your desk. So this is perfect for very long desks. The only thing I don't like about this boom arm is the tightening point. So you got three tightening areas, one in the front, one at the base clamp, and then one at the neck piece. Um, and this is not tension based. In order for you to adjust the angle, you have to actually loosen this up all the way and then adjust the angle to whatever you want and then you tighten it, which is kind of inconvenient. I do prefer a tension system over a locking mechanism, but I mean, for the price, again, I can't really complain. I think it's a pretty solid boom arm. Having good sounding audio doesn't always come down to just the microphone itself, okay? You need to pair it with an equally good audio interface so that you can take advantage of the microphone's full potential. Since I'm using an XLR microphone, I had to go with an XLR interface. And the Tynan was actually the cheapest one I can find on Timu, coming in around 55 bucks. To be honest, even this was a bit overkill because it comes with dual XLR inputs, but like I said, this was the only cheapest option out there. In the front, you got gain control, access to the volume for your headphones, and it's even got built-in phantom power that you can switch on in the back. I also like the fact that it comes with a quarter inch adapter, allowing you to convert your 3.5 millimeter plug from your headphones and plug it directly into the audio interface instead of using the ports on your PC. Speaking of headphones, this is the headset that I picked up from Timo. I got this for about 22 bucks from a company called Nubwo. And these are really comfortable because of how light they are. But the headband on the top adjusts as you put the headset on and the ear cups are really, really soft. There I do a microphone sound test with this headset. I apologize in advance if I make your ears bleed, you guys. Here is the headset microphone sound test. This is raw, unedited, directly into the audacity. I'm not even talking that loud, guys. Like I'm whispering and I can see how large the waveforms here are on audacity. That's I don't have to listen to this. I can already tell it sounds excruciating. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'd rather listen to fail additions at the X Factor. Who's crying at this weeping show? Uh, ah. But that's why I picked up a dedicated mic so that we don't have to rely on the crappy built-in mic from the headset. But you know what? Aside from the horrendous mic quality, these actually sound really good. So I do recommend them from gaming, especially for the $22 price tag. But for listening to music or watching content, I would recommend using speakers instead. So these were $20 on Timu, and it comes with a tiny little sub with a built-in volume control and a power switch. And they kind of remind me of the Creative Pebbles in the sense that don't underestimate them because of the size, because they actually sound really good and they get really loud too. Highly recommend them for only 20 bucks. Now, even though we didn't necessarily need a webcam for the setup, I couldn't really pass up this deal because it was less than $8 on Timu for a 1080p webcam. Uh, the reviews were pretty low on it, but I mean, how bad can it be? Oh my God. Okay, now I can see why. This is 1080p? If this is 1080p, 
I'm Joey Swole. There is no way in hell this is 1080p. <laughs> Wait a minute, maybe the light in the back is getting in the way. Oh my god, what in the Game Boy Color quality is this? This is, this is unreal. Okay, now, now I can see why the reviews are so bad, but seriously, what is, this is, this is terrible. This is even worse than a 480p camera. This can't be 1080p, hold on. Let me just confirm this real quick. Oh my God, the exposure is terrible too. Oh my God, it's actually 1080p. They, they must be smoking some good stuff because that does not look like it's 1080p. Okay, you know what? I, I don't recommend getting the camera. This is, even for $8, it's not worth it. It's just simply not worth it. I've seen $100 broken down Chromebooks with better webcam than this. Hell, I've even seen the Sidekick that has better picture quality than this. What do the reviews even say? I'm curious at this point. Because if I'm being honest, even four stars is a lot for this webcam. The best cam I ever have. It works great, best quality. And it's got six helpful votes on it too. Works very well. Works very well. It works so well, you have to say it twice. Works great. Good for the value, good for the price. <laughs> oh my God, a bunch of nine-year-olds on Timu buying stuff with their parents' credit card. That just goes to show you shouldn't trust every single review on Timu. Take it with a grain of salt. You know what? This actually works out in our favor because now we don't have to take up any space on the top of our monitor. So let's get rid of that and position the monitor light bar in the center. And this is actually one of the coolest things in this setup, believe it or not. Not only can you sync this with your smartphone and control the brightness and the temperature of the light, but you can also control the RGB lights in the back. That's right, it's got two sources of light. You've got the temperature light in the front for reading or just lighting up your desk, and then you have your RGB lighting in the back if you want to add some color to your setup. You could technically use the touch controls in the front of the light bar, but personally, I'd rather use the app because you have access to more controls and it's a lot easier to use. And last but not least, let's talk about the peripherals. So instead of going with the usual boring pre-built keyboard, I decided to try something different and kind of customize my very own. So I picked up the DK87, which is a long black swappable shaft. Not my words, Timu's words. And I added my own switches and keycaps to it. So basically you get the frame, the PCB, the plates, and the sound dampening pad for less than $50. All pre-assembled and ready to go. It's even got the stabs built in and it's compatible with RGB. So all you need to do is decide what switches and keycaps to go with it. I decided to go with the Automo silent white switches and I paired that with some pretty cool looking stealthy Japanese PBT keycaps. I could have gone with the old black keycaps, but I wanted to add some color in here. So I added the cherry escape key and the colored arrow keys on the keyboard here. Most of you know me very well. Like I typically like to go with the traditional linear type switches, but they're just something oddly satisfying about typing on a silent switch. If you guys are a streamer or you don't want your microphone to pick up any audible noises from your keyboard, then silent switches are definitely the way to go. So I paired the keyboard with a mouse called a Jazz. And I got this in particular because it's claiming to be an eSports wireless mouse with a 40 hour battery life. Can you even be an eSports gaming mouse by being wireless? I just found that statement a bit contradicting. But the mouse itself is pretty nice. You can swap the top plate between a solid and honeycomb design if you want something more lighter or you prefer a different look. You can play with the wire plugged in if you want, but honestly, I felt no difference between wired and wireless. This isn't to say that it's the most responsive mouse I've used either. All I'm saying is that it's playable on Modern Warfare 2. Like I haven't noticed myself doing significantly worse on this mouse compared to the mouse on my actual setup. Would I use this mouse in an eSports tournament? Absolutely not. And personally, I think the $40 price tag is a bit more towards the high end. I feel like there are much better mice on Timu that cost a lot less, but overall, not a bad mouse. So here's my overall rating for the entire setup. As always, if you guys see anything you like, I'll have a link down below. But more importantly, if you guys are enjoying the Timu videos, let me know by tossing a like before you head out. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.